<laughs> We've all seen the dog shows on TV. We've seen the judges hard at work, but what are they looking for? I have what no idea. Are what are they you looking laughing for? about? This is so fun. You see all these dogs in the studio. You can, you will see them. You're excited. I know you are. So joining us now is Linda. Linda, you're you're actually a judge at dog shows. I am a judge at dog shows. And you're going to tell us a little bit about what you look for when you're judging. Okay. Every breed has a standard which is created by the parent club of that breed. That is a replica. It's a faux. That's the dog we'll oh, be no, judging. Oh no, this is yeah. my well-behaved dog a right Pembroke here. Pembroke Welch Corgi. Note, it's not barking. <laughs> uh, and this is going to happen. You're going to be judging some of these breeds uh, coming up in, in a little bit at your Kennel Club's dog show. Tell us a little bit about that. Okay. The show is Saturday and we actually have a national specialty coming up on Friday, the, the afternoon before the show. And that's a very unusual breed, and you'll get to see that very soon. Um, it's going to be a great show. It's this Saturday. It's, it's August 3rd. It's all day long. It's in Greenfield. All day long. It's at Greenfield Community College. So everybody can just stop on by. But we have a little preview, just a little taste right now. So shall we take the breeds around? What do you call that? Are they walk, going around for a take spin? Take them around. Take them around. All right. Take them around. around. Take them around. Take them around. I feel like I'm at a dog show right now. So this do, is why. Look at this. This do is so cool. Do your thing. Tell us what you're All normally right. looking for what here. What we're looking for is movement, no, top like a line. the fluidity of movement. The reach. How they go in front, the drive. Then, that uh, one's a little that stiff. That one's a plush dog, but you're going to have a <laughs> plush dog competition, is Mine's that right? A stiff too. I beg your you're going to have a, a there's going to be plush We're dogs at the event. We're going to have a stuffed toy dog competition. We are. Now, shall we bring our dog in here that we're going to judge today? And now, if you don't mind, tell us a little bit about your dog. Hello, hi. Yes, um, this is Brazna. His full name is Linkudo Brazna Kiri, which basically is a long Gaelic name. <laughs> he's um, he's an Irish red and white setter. He is a 17th century breed. Um, they went back as far as maybe the 17th century in photos and artwork to tell that this breed existed. Um, basically, he wants to, he wants <laughs> to show some around. movement. Yes, he is a Oh. He's a good dog. Yeah, he's a very he's good beautiful. dog. He's beautiful. Oh, my goodness. Well, now, let's discuss a little bit. When you're in this area and you're about to start judging the dogs, what are you looking for? And we'll try to parallel it okay. on our dog over here. All my right, dog. let's um, let's get one of the table dogs Another in dog? here because we'll be parallel. And oh, perfect. be able to okay. do it better. I'll go grab a table. You mean you want this table here? Now, in the meantime, this dog, you were saying it almost went extinct for a while. Now it's back. Yes, uh, back in the 1800s when um, they, they became the... They actually bred, um, Irish setters were bred from this breed, and um, they became very popular both in Ireland and the United States. So the Irish red and white setter nearly was extinct. It <laughs> wasn't until oh, yeah. after <laughs> World War One that um, they, they came, came back. in revival huh. of the breed, and so hence so, we have them. So now we have a few dogs on the we table. We do. And do your thing, we'll watch you All and right. try to see if we can do it ourselves. Okay, we'll see this how we do. is <laughs> a Glen of a Mall Terrier. Okay. And what you have to consider first is the standard of the individual breed because the standard was created with a purpose in mind. So the dog has to be built to do what it was bred to do. So the first thing a judge does is look at the head and hold the head in the hands, at least that's what I do. And then I usually ask the handler to show me the bite. And now, what, what are you looking for in a bite? Do you want those perfect pearly whites or? No, nice. you're looking for the way the bite closes because each breed has a, calls for a different bite standard. So a dog with an overbite maybe won't win the competition as much as a dog with a perfect bite. Not will. necessarily. If the standard calls for an overbite, oh. it's okay. Well, they don't need braces then, right? They don't. It's, 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 okay. now, no. In that way, they're cheaper than kids. No other way. <laughs> That's true. Now, yeah. when the dog's on the table, what else are you looking for in this okay, process? Okay, so then you go over the head and see if the head meets the standard. You measure. You look at the ears Looks because this breed me. has a particular kind of ear. How's your dog doing, Ashley, over here? Oh, it's a perfect. Very calm. perfect. Yeah. Very calm. <laughs> so okay. proud. So then you, you feel the breastbone. And the chest. Now, is this for fitness? Are you checking the fitness level of the dog? No, you're, everything you do is to compare to your impression of the standard of the right, breed. So, right. if this is the ideal of the breed, you want the dog to measure up as closely as possible. Yeah, it should approximate the perfect 
in this case, Glenn of Amal, as possible. And so that's okay. how you decide who wins, more or less, who exactly. most resembles the ideal breed of that specific dog. Perfectly said. How do you then differentiate between one and the other? Is it looking for a percentile? You don't want this dog to be as perfect as possible. You want the dog to be as perfect as possible, and that's what makes judging best in show, which I don't do, um, is so difficult because those are the top dogs that you see. Well, we see so it on they TV. all have, you know, they all have achieved that level of perfection or near perfection. Now, Linda, what else do you look for when you're looking okay, at you a dog? You look at top line, for example. That's one of the things we saw in movement. So you run your hand along the top of the dog. You run your hand along the underside. And so, there's go. so much that you look at, but the, here's the thing that I'm always wondering. Okay. Why are you looking in there? Why, in, why do you look in the back area? Because what are you, you looking for back you're looking, there? Well, it's a good question. No, I've always, yeah. I've always been interested. All right, why? you look at how the legs are set on. Okay. And what kind of, what's called angulation they have. You look at tail set. Okay. And that's, once again, comparing it to the ideal. Exactly. I Everything is perfect. comparing it to the ideal. And when you have a male, you're looking for something else. <laughs> all right, Absolutely. we want to make sure that that's, that's all, all there, too. Now, if people at home have been thinking, oh, my pooch is adorable, my pooch can do this, what advice would you give them to get their dog ready to be best in show? Okay. I would advise them not to spend money on a dog without really researching the animal. And, and do your homework. And do your homework. Absolutely. Like if my dog has a snaggle tooth and he's not supposed to, he does, probably can't. Does your dog have a snaggle tooth? Maybe. I don't want to embarrass him. But he probably oh. shouldn't be in a dog show. No. Not necessarily. Does breath matter? If it did, you wouldn't see a lot of show dogs. Oh, okay, good. But that's probably a really good tip, though. Maybe a doggy breath mint might help. <laughs> and a help people change their breath case. mint for handlers <laughs> that's might true. help as well. Okay, so now you know. Take some notes. Thank you very much. And once You're again, welcome. the Pioneer Valley Kennel Club Dog Show is coming up this weekend, so everybody needs to stop in. We'll be I think back. my dog wins. I, we'll be back. Top, top five. <laughs> hey, don't move, because we're still cooking on Mass Appeal. Wait till you see our recipe. Welcome back to Mass Appeal. We're back talking about the Pioneer Valley Kennel Club Dog Show. And Tibby Chase and I are going to talk about obedience training with Ashley and with these lovely dogs and lovely ladies. Right, yes we are. I'm very happy to be here today well, um, at the dog show. What it is is we have one part of the dog show is confirmation, looking at dogs for the standard. Another part is what we call the performance part, where instead of worrying about how the dogs look so much, we have to know how they behave. And so that's what we're going to talk a little bit about today is good behavior in dogs. Looks aren't everything. Looks, <laughs> looks sure. are part of everything, but not everything. They're not everything. Not everything. Right, so exactly. We, well, we, have, we have two very different kinds of dogs here today. So you can see that both little dogs <laughs> and big dogs can be wonderful pets and great companions and well behaved. Over here we have two golden retrievers. We have Star, who's got her um, blue collar on, and we have Lily. Um, Star's eight, Lily is just, what, four? Right, and then over here we have two darling little papillons. These are little toy dogs. You know, what papillon means butterfly in French. I didn't know that. that because, because of their ears, their ears? right? Ah. And we have Troy, and we have Ladybug. And Ladybug's 12 years old, and Troy is eight, and Troy is Ladybug's son. Oh and my goodness! And she didn't even start being trained until she was eight or nine years old. So no, you know, old dogs can learn new tricks. <laughs> that is true. So then. Anyway, was, they're so well behaved right. as they should be. They should be. They should yeah. be right. And now you were saying earlier, dogs inherently they know how to sit, lie down, roll over. But it's you have to be the one telling them when to do it and kind of teaching them English almost. Right, uh, teaching them English. What we look at is basic training, um, being a good family pet, being a dog that you can go places with. Really, we're teaching English as a second language. <laughs> These dogs come from a world of dogs where they bite and they bark and they roll over and they use all this body language and all this stuff. And they come into our human society. And what we need to do is teach them to be verbal. How many of your dogs do you see on the phone? They don't talk Very to people cute. a lot on the telephone, cool, right? Though. You know, it's like, cool. I don't care. You know, they don't even do Facebook. But what <laughs> they do, what dogs do is they have a lot of body language, but they can learn words. And so what we try to do is take words, words like sit, down, stay, and we have a meaning for it, and they learn to respond to us. Like, everybody, down your dogs, right? Down. Have them lie down. 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 Good. And now at home, yeah. we do more simple things. We do this kind of thing. At right. The obedience show, there's going to be a lot more. What kind of events are you going to be doing, and what kind of things are these dogs capable right. of? Well, what we do at the obedience show is we take these basic things like sit and down, stand, come, retrieving, 
and we make it more formal, a little more pizzazz to it, mm -hmm. add some competition, so that when you see the dogs at the show, they have a certain number of things they have to go through. So they start with healing. So I'm going to these guys just walk around, sure. heal with their dogs. We've got these as braces. We have brace classes too, and they need to walk right next to you. And, so impressive. Right, the and two then of halt, them. and they sit right next to you, right? There you go. Very These are nice. obedient. I wish my dogs were Right, and then what we like to do is so show that dogs are very impressed. calm when people approach them. So what I'd like to do is have these dogs come over here. And why don't you stand them for us? So they'll stand, right? They'll stand. And um, you guys just go up and pat them. Go ahead. I can do that. Hi, still. Lily and Star. Hey. And now what are they supposed to do? Remain Not move. Good. Not move. Stay okay. right there, right? You can come Lily over still. and pet these guys. I'd love and they to. won't That's move. So much energy. Tell them stop. So stay. Just stay. If you don't mind, just stay one second. I'd like right. to pat you. Yeah. Ladybug and Troy. Ladybug and Troy. Hi, and so, Ladybug and once Troy. again, okay. these yeah. events, so many more. They're going to be at the event this weekend. They are. We have all breeds. Wonderful thing about dog, dog obedience is that they have all breeds. They can be big. They can be little. They can be hairy. They can be smooth. And Anything you, can, you need. And you've got three levels of competition from Thank simple to others. Thank you so much. Others. Wonderful. Thank oh, you so okay. much. More Massive Field coming up right after this.